Hello, everyone, and welcome to Kilowatt, a podcast about electric vehicles, renewable energy, autonomous driving, and much, much more. My name is Bodie, and I am your host. And I almost forgot the intro to the show. I wasn't sure which show I was doing. I've been doing so many podcasts lately. Speaking of doing so many podcasts lately, Allison Sheridan is on the latest episode of Beyond the Post. Beyond the Post is the podcast that I do with my buddy Rob, where we talk about all things digital creation, podcasts, social media influencers. We're going to have some authors on soon. So if you've ever thought about starting something in this realm, in this uh, uh, space, go ahead and check out Beyond the Post, and I'll put a link to the Beyond the Post YouTube and podcasts in the show notes. That way, if you'd like to check out Allison's interview, you absolutely can. Um, you can also go to podfeet.com to see all of the cool things that Allison is up to. All right, let's jump into our news. NEO delivered over 20,000 cars in July. That is the third straight month in a row that NEO has delivered over 20,000 vehicles. So congratulations to the NEO team. That's a big accomplishment for them. If you're in the market for a used EV, consider looking at 2017, 2018, and 2019 Chevy Bolts because according to Inside EVs, you can find some of them for under $10,000 on the used EV market. And I'm going to be honest with you, I have never met a Bolt owner that was unhappy with their car. So uh, if you're looking for a second car for your family, one for your kids, or just a affordable car for yourself, consider a used Chevy Bolt. VinFast has started shipping their VF3. So if you don't know what the VF3 is, it's a mini SUV. It's a four seater, has 125 miles of range, seven year warranty or 160,000 kilometers, whichever comes first. The starting price will be less than 13,000 US dollars. Now that's not going to be here in the United States. When it comes to the US, it's estimated that it'll cost less than or around $20,000, but still very impressive price. Now, as far as deliveries, they're going to start in Vietnam and the Philippines for 2024. And then in 2025, they'll move on to Europe, the rest of Southeast Asia and the United States. So I'm looking forward to seeing a VF3 here. I think that that's a pretty cool car. Lucid Motors has started producing their pre-production version of their new SUV, the Gravity. This is a three-row SUV, 440 plus miles. It's going to start somewhere around $80,000. And we should see actual production of these vehicles and deliveries sometime in late 2024. Now, the Gravity is pretty impressive. The Lucid Air is very impressive, but it's also very expensive. The Lucid Air starts, which is their sedan, starts at $69,900 with the Lucid Air Pure, and it tops out at $249,000 for the Air Sapphire. Very expensive vehicle. Even at $70,000, that's an expensive vehicle. To this point, Lucid only sold 6,001 Lucid Air sedans in 2023, and that you know, includes the Air Pure starting at $70,000 all the way up to the Air Sapphire at $250,000. So the Gravity will definitely help Lucid sales, not probably not in 2024 too much, but in 2025 because the SUV market, especially here in North America, is strong, uh, even though it does start around $80,000. But what Lucid really needs is they need that mid-size, mid-priced EV. And they are actually planning one. And I'm going to go over some things that we know about the unannounced mid-sized EV. First of all, name. We don't know the name, but Lucid has trademarked the Lucid Earth. That kind of goes with the air and the gravity. So maybe that will be the name. Next up, we have the cost. Peter Rawlinson has said that this is going to cost around $48,000. Who knows if they're going to be able to honor that price? Um, and if they can, you know, if, if they can hit that $48,000 target, will they be able to make the entry-level trim available at launch? Or is this something where they're going to 
launch the more expensive version of the car. And at some point in time, they get to the entry level trim, which is what they did with the Lucid Air Pure. Now, as far as range goes, we don't have any specific range numbers that Lucid has given us. But what we do know is the Lucid Air is a very efficient vehicle. The Lucid Air Pure gets about five miles per kilowatt hour. This is according to Lucid Motors. And according to Inside EVs, the 2024 Model S long range all wheel drive gets around 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour. And both of these are entry level vehicles for both companies, the Model S long range and the uh, Air Pure, but the Air Pure is a rear wheel drive vehicle. So it will get a little bit better. Uh, it does have a little bit better efficiency than the all wheel drive version of the Tesla Model S would. But I think the, the, the point remains the same that Lu Lucid does a really good job with efficiency and they have a lot of great technology in the Lucid Air and I'm sure the Gravity as well. So whatever they decide to call their mid-sized EV, it's going to be very efficient and have some really cool technology in it as well. Now, when can we expect to see this vehicle? I wouldn't be surprised if we got an announcement or, uh, you know, a teaser at the end of 2024, maybe around the LA Auto Show when that comes out in late November. So I wouldn't be surprised to see an update from Lucid during that time. We'll definitely see something in 2025 because production is scheduled for late 2026, according to Lucid, with deliveries beginning in early 2027. So they're going to definitely want people want to have time for people to pre-order this vehicle so that they can judge what the demand will be for it. And I think the demand is going to be pretty high. I don't know if it will sell like the Model Y does because <laughs> Lucid, while a very good brand, and you know, I'm not worried about Lucid going away. They're financed by the Saudi government. They're fine. <laughs> or the Saudi Wealth Fund. They're fine. They're, they have all the money that they need until the Saudis decided decide they're not going to fund it anymore. But if I asked, you know, 10 of my friends, I'd probably have four of them that knew who Lucid Motors was. Maybe if I jogged their memory, maybe that would go up to five or six. But honestly, that's not a it's not a brand that I think a lot of folks who aren't into EVs know a lot about. And honestly, that's something that Peter Rawlinson has said at earnings or during earnings calls that they need to get their name out there. They need a better brand recognition. So, and if they want to sell a mass market car, they're definitely going to have to get their name out there somehow, whether that's through word of mouth like Tesla does, or whether that's through actual advertising. All right, that's enough on Lucid. Let's move on to Ford. Ford Blue Cruise has been approved for 15 new European countries. That makes a total of 17 countries if you include the US and Canada, and you should, by the way. So Blue Cruise is available in Austria, Belgium, the Czech Republic, Denmark, France, Great Britain, Germany, Greece, Hungary, Italy, the Netherlands, Poland, Portugal, Spain, Sweden, and then, of course, US and Canada. So that's that's good news for, for Ford and folks who own Fords in Europe. Uh, last story here in our EV news, there's a new JD Power owner satisfaction leader in the EV space. So this is a, a survey that JD Power does. It's actually called the Automotive Performance Execution and Layout Appeal for short. And this study measures people's emotional attachment and their level of, of excitement to their vehicle. So the Genesis GV60, Kia EV6, the Kia EV9, and the BMW iX, oh, well, there's one more, and the Porsche Taycan received the highest rankings in their respective segments. Like Tesla actually fell quite a bit. They, they did at one point in time lead these rankings, and they have fallen quite a bit uh, in this year's survey. And I was reading the Inside EVs article by Lillian Denenstrun. Hopefully I said that name right. I'm positive I didn't, but and I apologize to him. But Tesla's product line, and I agree with um, the author on this, Tesla's product line is 
largely unchanged. You know, Tesla's always improving their vehicles, um, but they don't have a yearly cadence for new models. You know, traditional automakers will come out with a new model every fall here in the U.S. anyway. Uh, Tesla just improves their vehicles and they, you know, work that into the production. And one day you have hardware for in the middle of May or the end of June, which is what happened for Model Y owners in 2023, except for me. I was one week, I took my delivery of my Tesla one week before hardware for vehicles started rolling out. So that's, that, that was, that was a good feeling. Anyway, anyway, my point on this is initially when Tesla started doing their updates mid cycle, you know, just when it was ready, when a new motor is ready, they're going to put it in and they're not going to make a big, uh, there's not going to be a lot of fanfare about it. Uh, that was great. Uh, unfortunately, because these are small incremental changes over time, the vehicle doesn't really change. Like we got a Model 3 refresh, which is great. We haven't really seen a Model S or Model X refresh in the last couple of years. We haven't seen a Model Y refresh late, but we know it's coming with Juniper. I do think that, you know, this is a, a little problem for Tesla because for so long, they were so dominant in the EV space, especially here in the US, and now they're not. There are so many good choices to choose from. All of these vehicles, the GV60, I looked at that car, it was more expensive than what I wanted to pay, one before I bought my Waddle Y. I looked at the EV6, the EV9 wasn't out, but I would definitely look at the EV9 today. I looked at the Ionic 5, which is a Hyundai product, but these other vehicles are Hyundai as well. I really would never consider the BMW iX or the Porsche Taycan because those are so far outside of what I can afford. But, um, you know, the, these are good, compelling vehicles, and Tesla's going to have to work harder to continue producing vehicles that people want to buy. Now, Tesla has a lot of advantages, but they're not the only player in the market, and all of these other companies are producing solid vehicles and Tesla needs to watch out for that. All right, that is it for our EV news. Did you know you can support this show and get an ad-free experience for as little as $1 a month? Like a $1 a month is pretty cheap. It might be the cheapest Patreon <laughs> on Patreon. My goal with the Patreon was never to make money, it was just to use that money to help pay for the show, and it does. So if you would like to sign up for Patreon, help support the show financially, not my, not me financially, but the show, the show financially, go to patreon.com forward slash kilowatt or support kilowatt.com. And uh, again, zero ads. So if, if you don't like the ads, check out patreon.com forward slash kilowatt. All right, let's move on to our Tesla news. <laughs> I, I know many of you who listen to this show, because uh, I get lots of emails on this, don't necessarily like Elon for a variety of reasons. And I don't talk about the political stuff that Elon talks about um, for a variety of reasons, but also because that's, that's not really what we talk about on this show. But I do think this is worth putting here for no other reason than that you know about it, okay? And and don't worry, this is not a big political post about something that Elon talked about. This is actually a post about Tesla investor uh, Galileo Russell, who is uh, pretty popular in the Tesla community. He is an investor. I don't know if he still has a podcast or a YouTube show, but he used to. He posted on X that he was disappointed in Elon's outspoken political views. And not so much disappointed in the fact that Elon holds these views, it's just how he communicates those views. And Galileo had said that, and I'm kind of paraphrasing here, and I'll read a, one of the quotes from his thread, but it, it, it's not only hurting the company, but it's also turned a car that he loved into a political statement that I don't know what Galileo's political uh, leanings are. I, I can guess because I've listened to him before and I follow him on social media. But I want to read to you real quick his one of the things in his thread that I thought was particularly uh, engaging. 
He said, there is no doubt material damage has been done to the Tesla brand. Every time I step into my car, it used to be about fun, positivity, and sustainability. Now, and at least in every major U.S. city, my car has become a political statement that is divisive. That sucks. It's like a cloud that follows my car everywhere I go. I'm worried this trend is and will continue to seriously hurt Tesla's sales and brand. Now, I live in a major American city, and I don't think anybody cares that I drive a Tesla or knows my politics, but I do get what he's saying here. Um, and, and this next part is the real reason why I put this in the show. Elon responded to Galileo's thread, and all it said was, I hear you. Now, could he have said more? Yes. Could he have said more with and had a bigger impact? I don't think he could have. Now, what Elon does in the future in regards to all the things that Galileo brought up, I have no idea what's going to happen. But it's nice to know that he's listening to this feedback. All right, let's move on. Uh, in This is a little bit happier news. In July, Tesla started testing their first dry cathode 4680 battery cells for the Cybertruck. So this is really cool. Dry cathode is one of the things that Tesla had uh, way back in battery day up on the on the slide. We're going to have dry cathode and it hasn't happened to this point, but it sounds like it's going to happen soon. The benefits to the dry cathode process is there is less production processes that need to have uh, that need to take place. Like you don't need the drying or the solvents and all that stuff, which means you can manufacture in a smaller space which is great, uh, and you don't have to buy all this equipment. There's also less cost for a variety of different reasons. It's better for the environment. I'd mentioned there's no solvents in there. Um, it reduces time to production, better energy density, so lots of positive things. Now, when this will actually go into production vehicles, I have no idea, but that's out there, and I just wanted everybody to know about it. All right, our final story here. Tesla has started rolling out supervised full self-driving 12.5 uh, to more people. It's a wider release. They had already started rolling this out to a limited number of Tesla owners. But over the next few weeks, everybody who has full self-driving should get it. <laughs> and Elon uh, has recently said, and we talked about this, uh, that unsupervised full self-driving by the end of the year will be possible probably not elon's been saying that every year since hardware 2 came out and it has never been true and actually there's a little bit of a concern that tesla is pushing up against constraints for hardware 3 equipped vehicles and so there may be a world where unsupervised full self-driving even if it's level 3 maybe level 4 will never get to hardware three vehicles. And honestly, I'm being honest, as, as, as uh, somebody who owns a hardware three vehicle, uh, if, you, if you look at when hardware three was released, which was August, uh, April of 2019, we are pretty long in the process for a computer. Like I don't typically keep my computers for five years and we are five plus years on this current iteration of hardware. Now, does that mean hardware three is useless? Absolutely not. Does that mean we won't get something approaching unsupervised full self-driving? Yeah, maybe, but it's going to be really hard for Tesla to um, code around the limitations of hardware three to get those features in there. You know, and Elon is saying that with hard, uh, full self-driving 12.5, that you're going to be able to go for more than a year between interventions. I would really like Tesla to make data on full self-driving 12.5 available to the propeller, propeller hat wearing nerds uh, to verify this is actually the case because Elon has exaggerated capabilities of nearly every full self-driving update that's come out, especially every major update. Uh, up into the point of falsifying videos. So I don't believe anything that he says. Not that I think, I don't, I, and I still don't think Elon's a bad person, 
but I don't believe anything that he says. There are people in my life who I love and I'm related to, and I don't trust anything that comes out of their mouth, but I still love them and I still like hanging out with them. Elon's in that same boat. Uh, I don't love him. I don't know him, but he's in that same boat of, oh, this is interesting. I don't believe you. <laughs> Uh, you know, and there are people on social media who've gotten early access to the full self-driving version 12.5 and they love it and they have nothing but good things to say about it. But some of those people are Tesla investors. So they have a, an incentive to not say bad things about it to their, you know, thousands of followers. And then again, all of them would like to continue receiving early releases. So any criticism that they have might be, I'm not saying that it is, it might be muted because they want to continue receiving early access to full self-driving. And we know that Elon can be a little persnickety when it comes about uh, people, when it comes to people uh, saying things about his products, he, he gets his... Uh, if he doesn't think it's fair criticism, whether it is or it isn't, you know, he he goes nuclear sometimes. So I don't want to I don't want to think that I'm calling anybody's credibility into question. But based on those things, uh, I take what they say with a grain of salt. So um, I guess what I'm saying here is full self driving 12.5 is coming out. If you get it, can you please tell me what you think of it? I'm I'm really curious, and I'm I'm hoping that Elon sticks to what he said when he's uh, uh when he mentioned that with every major release, it might be a good idea to do another one month trial for people. I would love that. Uh, that would that would be great. I'd love to test it out. All right, everybody, that is it for our show this week, or not this week, but for yeah, this week. Today's Friday. I hope you all had a good week. I hope you all have a great weekend. On Tuesday's show, it'll be news. And then on Friday's show next week, we will have Ford's Q2 2024 earnings call. Again, thank you all for listening, and I will see you on Tuesday. Tuesday.